All right, next question up. And we're gonna begin by reading the question sentence. So the question sentence here reads, if there are 35 vehicles total, how many sedans are there? So be very careful, everyone. Being detailed, it's gonna save you every single time. So here it says, we have 35 vehicles total, how many sedans? Okay, so there's clarity here. We are given 35 total vehicles and we're comparing this with an unknown number of sedans. So this is classic proportions. We have to compare the same things in the same way and where it's convenient, we might have some convenient situations to deal with numbers wise. But first things first, it's this. Our priority is to write another comparison in the same way. It's gonna have to compare total to sedans. That is the goal. If we can set up our proportion to be consistent with that question sentence, we're good to go. Watch this. In a parking lot, sedans represent four out of every 10 vehicles. So I see here we have four to 10. That is sedans to 10. Everybody, what does 10 represent? Does 10 represent not sedans? Does it represent trucks? Does it represent, you know, what does 10 represent here? 10 represents vehicles, total vehicles. Four out of every 10 surveyed. So out of every 10 vehicles, four of them are sedans. Four are sedans and 10 is the total. So this is where some folks might get confused, especially if they're learning this topic fresh for the first time. Most of us who are learning this and kind of doubting ourselves a little bit might think that, okay, sure, four goes here for sedans. That's consistent. That's good. But you think that you might have to do four plus 10 to get 14 in there. Who thinks that they had to do that? Who thinks that they had to do four plus 10 to put 14 in for the total? Yeah, if a couple of us did, that would have been wrong. That would have been wrong only because we already had the total. Right here, everybody. We already had the total being 10. So that's all we have to place here. 10 for the total. We don't have to add the 10 and the 4 because the 10 is already the total. We're already in possession of the total, so there's nothing else that we need to do. So once we have this, now we know that we're set. We can compare 35 over 10 equals x over 4. We can do this now. And once we're here to do this, we can now cross multiply to get 10x equals 35 times 4, which is 70 times 2, so 140. And then at the end, we'll divide both sides by 10, giving us x equals 14. And there we go. That would make 14 sedans if the total number of vehicles is 35. So there we go. The correct answer here is answer choice A. All right, so here we are handling this next question. And so this question here says, hey, uh, well, how much paint remains in the can right here at the bottom? I know that the, the question sentence actually starts way up here, but we're good. We don't need to get ourselves bottled up by reading you know, this fraction, then this fraction. Really what we wanna read is the story itself. So it says, if this, much, this many gallons are poured out for priming and that many gallons for trim, how much paint remains in the can? Again, when you think about the story itself, it really sounds like we have something, you know, a certain amount of paint, and we use this much, we use that, that much, and we want to know how much is left. And that's really what this is about. We see that the mixing can holds two gallons of paint. So we start with the two gallons, and then we're going to be subtracting the three quarters of a gallon, and then subtract the two thirds of a gallon. And there we are. So with that said, now that we're here, everybody, there are two ways that we can really go about this. One is changing this whole number two into a fraction immediately 
and then getting all three fractions to have the same denominator and we'll do our thing. Or we can combine these two fractions right now and then deal with the two later. And that's actually gonna be my preference. I would rather combine these two right now only because, only because my party people, dealing with a whole number is gonna be really easy to turn to whatever denominator this becomes. It's gonna be super easy. So let's go ahead and handle this everybody. If we're subtracting three quarters and then subtracting two thirds, let's get the same denominator first. My party people, what denominator is that going to be? What do four and three both go into? Yeah, that's going to be 12. Absolutely. So to get 12 over here, we'll multiply by three on the numerator and denominator. And on the right side, we'll go ahead and multiply by four on the bottom and top right there. Once we do that, we see that we'll have nine over 12 over here minus eight over 12 over there. Help me out, my party people. If we take away nine, and then we take away eight right after, that's the same as doing what? Taking away how much total? Joseph, I see you. Yes, that's correct. Taking away 17, absolutely. Remember everybody, the key is in the operation. Subtracting and subtracting again is the same thing as subtracting the total. So nine and eight make 17. So this becomes two minus 17 over 12. This is the part where things get a little easier only because we're dealing with that whole number. Let me move this over to the side. We're dealing with that whole number and we can make that whole number a fraction very quickly, very quickly. All we have to do is just write it over one. My party people, this is the hardest question of the day. What do I need to multiply this one by to reach 12? I know, tough question. Yeah, that's gonna be 12 because 12 times one, that'll be 12 and we're good. So let's go ahead and handle that nice and easy times 12 on the bottom and on top. And then we end up getting 24 over 12 minus 17 over 12. Help me out, my party people. What is 24 minus 17? 24 minus 17 ends up giving us seven. And there we are. That'll be seven over 12. And there it is. That's how much paint remains in the can, seven twelfths of a gallon. And there we are. All right, let's give this next one a try here where the first thing we do is read that question sentence. Which of the following is the ratio representing nails to screws? So again, we want the ratio of nails to screws. And that means we're gonna have to find the values representing nails and then screws, and then we'll simplify it just like a fraction. So over here, we have 45 boxes of nails, 60 boxes of screws, and so what we'll write down is the ratio of 45 for nails, and then 60 over here for screws. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll write this like a fraction, so I can just see this as simplifying fractions nice and easy, where I know that 45 and 60 are both divisible by five. So even if you don't know that 15 is the biggest divisor that we have, even if we don't know that, we can still succeed here if we start with five because 45 divided by five is nine and then 60 divided by five, that's gonna give us 12. So we're not done because we don't see a ratio of nine to 12. So what we can do is finish things up by simplifying again, where we divide by three on the top and the bottom which is again, if you take a look here, that's gonna be the same as 15. Dividing by five and divided by three, that's dividing by 15. So you can still get to that big divisor, but from here, nine divided by three is three, 12 divided by three is four, and that's our final answer, my party people. That is a ratio of three to four, not four to three, because again, the order matters. So again, the answer here, the correct answer is answer choice a.